time with us so without much i do ladies and gentlemen for the very first time onto the power impact series show help me welcome no other person than winfred de la seto smith all the way from ghana <laughs> let's show her some love <laughs> well a very good evening to you brother winifred de la seto Thank smith so how are you doing very well, thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Benjamin Osanta. Right, 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 right. Thank you too. Thank you. We just go with the first, our first introduction, and then uh, break it of the ice. We just want to find out from you how has the year been from January till October. How has the year been for you? <laughs> well, I guess um, we are all in this country, and we all know what's happening in the economy. <laughs> So the same that goes and how everybody else has been impacted is same with me. Uh, in terms of work, I believe you've already said what I do, and it's quite a very busy time at work every day. And um, you always have to be on top of your toes, uh, you know, working and, and solving risk issues here and there. So, but I'll say that the, the year has been good. We are still alive. So we can say it's been good. <laughs> we can say it's been good. We're still alive. <laughs> we can say it's been good. Yes, I made mention of um, Rex, 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 Rex. Well, we want to know more about Winifred Della Seto Smith. So, in just like a minute, we want to tell us who is Winifred Della Seto Smith. <laughs> yeah, okay. Winifred Della Seto Smith, um, I'll say I'm a a normal woman. <laughs> I'm a corporate <laughs> lady and um, a family woman, uh, married with five kids. I've been working um, in 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 the business for well over right. 22 years this year. And my wow. background is actually, um, you know, computer science. I, I was my background is fully computer science, information technology. But somewhere along the line, I delved into uh, risk management, and I've done uh, a number of things working with, you know, telco for a while. I have worked as well because of the nature of our business with fintech, and um, yeah. So basically, it's and I think on what is my passion basically is to also mentoring um, the young generation, and lately I have come to focus a lot on, of, on women and, um, you know, and talking a lot on leadership. And when I speak on leadership, uh, mostly it's not only skewed to females. I, I talk on, on leadership, you know, in totality. But lately I've come to skew it a bit to females because of the peculiar challenges that I've realized through my mentoring of younger girls. And, and I realized that with the boys, they don't have that much of the challenges like the girls do have. So I have lately skewed a bit more onto the woman's side to see how uh, in my little corner I can, you know, support, uh, you know, in that um, perspective. So that's, in a nutshell, that's um, who I am. Um, I do a lot of coaching. I do mentoring um, on, in my free time. Uh, I speak a lot uh, on speaking engagements and just basically um, to support the, you know, the future agenda um, on, on different topics. So that's basically who I am. <laughs> we like it this way. We like it. We love it. <laughs> Crips and short, and that's who she is. Yeah, we love it. We love it. We love it. So, background in computer science, and then uh, mm -hmm. you move in here. Yeah. So uh, uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I, I had uh, three ladies here who all have background in computer science, <laughs> science, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, let's get the stories. Let's get the story. How has it been? I mean, from a female's perspective, being in the computer science uh, industry, mostly it's being said that this is a male-dominated industry. And as a woman in that industry, what have been some of the challenges? What have been some of the battles? What have been some of the victories? And what have been some of the engaging stories that needs to be told? Yeah, um, Benjamin, I think I, I always tell people I, I haven't had the reality of noticing that I'm a woman when I'm amongst the guys. Um, maybe because of the way I was brought up um, from my father's side. My father always used to say that um, there's no job for a woman and there's no job for a man. And so my brother would wash the dishes and I would do the same. I would do the gardening. 
So I never really had that reality as I was growing up and in the computer science world. But um, truth be told, there was always a subtle, you know, bias against women, you know, you know, in that field, um, you know, basically to say that the men are poised to be in, in, in computer science. So there's been, yes, there's been challenges, especially you would have to prove yourself two times more, uh, you know, than the guys may naturally do to get to the next level. But it's not been my reality. And I've always told ladies that have mentored that they shouldn't focus on that. They should focus on how do I create value and impact, you know, in that technical space? And wow. how do I make sure that I'm understanding the principles and wherever I am, if I'm a, if be cybersecurity, engineering, my sister did engineering. She was a, an electrical engineer. engineer. So we've, we've not had that reality. But um, as I speak to people, I realize that that's, that's something that they have faced as well, maybe because of the socioeconomic you know, environment they had come from and all that. Yes. So this is how I tell my story. I, I know that there have been challenges uh, in that space when it comes to men and women. And I know that there have been biases in those spaces. But I always say that, why not we flip it? My coach says something, says something to me that, Compost is something that is, is bad, but you can use compost as fertilizer. So why don't you flip <laughs> what is bad to the good side? And I always look at the positive side. I don't like to look at the negative side. So that's what I would say about you know the challenges or the my experience in, in the technical field. Wow, this 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 is wonderful. I mean, you can flip the compost. <laughs> <laughs> and use it as fertilizer. Oh, I love it. Hey, hey, he gets into the chat here. The, the conversation has already started. He says, flip yes. it, flip it, flip it. <laughs> Don't see the bad side of it. Just flip it. Exactly. So get to the chat area. Let me know who's online with me. Let me know where you're joining us from because, yes, it's going to be good in here today. Yes. So thank you, Marquesia, watching live from Mam Probi Dansuma. Thank you for. For, for, for joining us and say great profile madam thank you so much thank you thank you thank you let it come in let it come in, let it come in. yeah so you're talking about your mentoring your mentoring do you, you, you have um is it a is it an organization is it a foundation is it uh a group or what is it that uh you're talking about is um uh mentoring and, and uh coaching and the rest what, what really it is so that we can all know what it is you know, it's not an organization my personal coaching is more like let me use csr my that i do <laughs> um okay. you know my I, I call it my 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 corporate social responsibility um wow. i'm not <laughs> yeah i'm not exactly you know making any financial gains from it and what I basically try to do is, um, you know, any young person who feels the need to close a certain gap in, 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 in their, um, their path, their career path, and engages me, I do advise. And we, we put in informal sessions to discuss. Um, yesterday, I had a, one such session with a gentleman who was in a, a field and was looking at moving into another field, and he wanted to see whether it was strategic for him to move at that, at that point in time and, and what was my experience, you know, um, during the time I was moving <clears throat> my roles. And I did explain at the time to him that, um, you know, in career development, you need to grow breath because you want to understand your field much better. And as you go to the top, your breath mm -hmm. is what takes you up because it gives you a wider uh, knowledge span and um, so I don't really have um, you know a, f a formal you know, mentoring session but when I take up you know single individuals we put in a plan and, and you know go through the mentor sessions myself I do have a mentor and because at every stage you must have a mentor or a coach to guide you because you will never know it all and Truth be told, the levels, the different levels are different experiences and different dynamics. You will not believe um, the difference <laughs> from moving a, a notch up from a senior manager to an executive or an executive up. The dynamics are totally different. And if you don't have a coach to give you that perspective, you won't be able to make it. Um, wow. So basically, I have a number of people I, I, I coach. Uh, the mentoring is a bit intense, so I, I'd like to keep a small number. Um, to do that. Right. 
Yeah. Wow, she, she loves to keep a smaller number to deal with. That, that's that's <laughs> small class size. <laughs> that's, that's a small class size. Yes. Why well, is it that when, when the numbers are, are are too many, it becomes a bit distracting, or why? Or you just prefer that yes, just a small size. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yes, with with coaching is it's easier. It's it's us and go because you're coaching on particular issues, but with mentoring you are looking at all the facets of the person's life and it's a bit more intense and looking at my work schedule and the fact that I'm a mother of five and I have husband duties as well, <laughs> I need to have some space for my personal well-being as well. So I try to keep it a bit small, um, but I'm looking at doing it on a larger scale and to see how that works uh, and, and, and what the night dynamics are going forward. But for now, I, I keep it a bit tight. Uh, just to make sure that I do a good job to whoever um, wants that mentoring. <laughs> that's good. That's good because yeah. hey, hey, having two and managing five, I, I, we will get to that point. We want to find out how you're able to balance that. <laughs> the five, the husband, uh, yourself, business, and then bringing on board smaller size. <laughs> how do you do that? No, okay. So all the ladies in the house, you have to get closer now. <laughs> how do you do that? What do you find from Winifred? How she does that? How are you able to balance this? How are you able to do that? I must confess that it's not been easy, but um, I always say that in life, you must make your choices properly. And I made a choice to marry a man who is very supportive. And there's no day that he keeps me hanging. And there have been times when I had to go to office with my kids. There have been times wow. when I had to go to presentations and speaking engagements with my kids. They sat in wow. there and listened as well. And so we just take it one day at a time. And I always say that when you have, it's, it's like when, let me just give an example. Like when you have a mountain of food in front of you, maybe that's an easy one. You have to take it easy to break that food down. So when I have all these, yeah, all these kids ahead of me, I think I just ex enjoy the the, the experience mm -hmm. as it go as it goes. There are times when it's very tough because um, when they were younger, you'd have to you know, rush, drop them at mom's place, um, always late to work. It, it's not been easy, but there are choices that you have to make. Do you want to have kids or you want to follow your career path? I ask myself, why can't I have both? And what does it mean to have both? And so those were some of the decisions I made. So it means I have to get somebody who is interested to support me in that, in that area. And, and so that my, my life will be much easier. Otherwise, then there's no way that I could have done it alone. No way. There's no way. <laughs> I like that one. There's no way. There is yeah. no way. Universe, there is no way. <laughs> I, get to the chat area. Let me know your story. I, 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 I'm sure you have a similar story like uh, Winifred is sharing. Uh, dropping the children early at mom's place to be able to be present in the office to meet an, an assignment or meet an appointment. Get, get to the let me know your experience because hey, this is it's real. We're feeling it's real. It's real in here. Let me just give some shout out. So thank you so much, Rebecca. Adriaco says, Rebecca from North K. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining. And then uh, Amma Bicham representing from Castland. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining here. Now we are moving in and zooming in straight to our topic for today. Women in leadership. I'm actually, you have already started it. <laughs> she has already started the topic already. She's already started. Women in leadership. Do we have a limited number of women in leadership or are women shining away from leadership or is it that the environment has not been created for women to move into leadership? Yeah, I think as I delve into um, the field, what, what I've done is I've, I've put the discussion points in three areas, um, basically to explain or to talk about what is, is essential uh, for women leadership. And I think in the past we've we've done we've done a lot on uh, bringing uh, on Women's Day, you know, bringing some of these things to the fore. Uh, things like breaking the bias, what it means to break the bias, and what it entails. 
I just before I start, I just want to make a quote on um, Oprah Winfrey. She's one of uh, you know my very solid um, women in in leadership positions, and she said right. the world's most prominent women leaders show the importance of honesty, courage, mm -hmm. impact, and decisive action in leadership. Wow. And for for me, I think that we have definitely moved. Um, so we have improved the women in leadership agenda uh, from a global perspective, um, but there's still a lot to be done. And okay. my first um, session of, you know, the first part of discussion, basically to, to tickle our minds on what, is, what are the essential uh, elements that we should be looking at. And basically uh, the elements to consider the women in leadership agenda to uh, uh, you know, for proactive dismantling of systematic barriers, because we know that we face certain barriers. Um, what are the biases that, you know, we face? Uh, promoting uh, equitable policies, you know, fostering the culture and inclusivity, and to ensure that we women have equal opportunities. So just on that, uh, you know, essential elements, what I did was to look at all the different, you know, things that we should be looking at as 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 um, women when we, we we are getting into the leadership position, and basically what we should be looking at as a community and collectively, and uh, to to work um, on. So the first would be the importance of diversity. So I've just outlined six areas. So I'll, I'll talk more into details on it. So first will be importance of diversity. Um, the other will be the gender disparity and what that means. What are the barriers to entry for women? The benefits that you know, the women bring in leadership. Uh, the other part will be policy changes in leadership and basically the global outlook. So if we look at the importance of diversity, and we would also look at some numbers on the business case, and that gives us facts, real facts on the ground and, and, and why we should push uh, this uh, you know, agenda. So the importance of diversity basically, um, you know, focuses around, I've just picked three key areas. One, innovation and creativity. Um, we all know that diversity brings together a number of individuals with different backgrounds. Um, here I am uh, as a computer scientist. I'm sure, uh, uh, Benjamin, you, are, you also have another background. And if we are going to look at a certain situation, we'll all look at it in, with different eyes. And it only makes the conversation richer. Um, I have my own experiences, I have my perspectives. So innovation and creativity becomes, you know, something that, you know, comes out from diversity when we, we look at, you know, the different aspects of inclusivity. Uh, the other one is basically fairness. And I think fairness, uh, as we know, it is, you know, promoting diversity in a fundamental aspect of, you know, social justice and, and fairness. And embracing diversity ensures that all individuals have equal opportunities to participate in various aspects of their lives. And then the last bits around diversity is also better, better decision making because of all these things. So people have other you know, uh, backgrounds, they see things in different perspective, and so we make uh, decisions better. And when you look at the gender disparity, and there the, the are key things that comes into play. So one is just that implicit bias. I mean, bias that's not really spoken, but very subtle, where you know a woman is seen as not, um, what's the word to use, not ready or uh, against the, you know uh, you know a guy, and and I know that um, I was we were having a discussion uh, some time back with one of our executives, and he did say that it, it's 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 worrying because sometimes even. Uh, guys who are 20 to 30 percent ready are seen as, you know, better placed than a woman who is like about 80 percent ready. And so what's the question? It all boils down to implicit bias, where people just just yeah. feel that you cannot do it and then stereotypes. Um, the other is that uh, workplace policies and practices. And when I started work 20 years ago, I, we didn't have flexi work times. I only had three months when I had my, my, my first child. Today, we, you can have six months, even organizations are pushing it up to one year. 
and they give you a very flexible time so you can still maintain your work, uh, you know, or for your work so you don't lose your job. But in right. the past, it didn't happen. Um, today, pre-COVID, we have flexi, you know, flexi uh, workplace. You can work from home. And so the narrative is changing. Uh, right. We know that the narrative is changing in, in that area. The other basically is representation and role models. Because when we want to talk about the gender disparity issue, it's important that we have a certain level of representation on the leadership, uh, you know, boardrooms, the C suites, because that also gives the presence of visibility uh, to the younger ones. So it's they get inspired to also get into that role. And when we talk about barriers to entry, basically, yes, uh, biases will be another thing that we will look at in work life, uh, uh, you know. Uh, challenges and lack of representation. And the other is basically, what are the benefits of women in leadership? Because one will ask, uh, and I know people say that, I mean, in an interview, why should we push the women? The one who does what wins. But the question is, what are the benefits of women in leadership? And how do we make sure that we create that you know, environment to bring women in? So one is diverse perspective and innovation. We've spoken about that. The other is improved performance. I would see the uh, the business case and the the facts from research that um, was 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 documented in the Forbes article in in March 2022. That gives a very good view on performance, uh, looking at women in leadership position in different companies. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, right. Basically, you'd realize that there's better decision making because, I mean, women naturally, they also have different, they've been built differently and men have been built differently. So they bring that different view to the table. Uh, the other basically is enhanced employee engagement. And the last is my favorite, which is mentorship, uh, role modeling and mentorship, because, you know, women naturally are motherly and they, would, they, they are more <laughs> prone to 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 be open to to that, sure. and then the the fifth is policy changes, and I think this is a critical component of the women agenda because um, basically when we make policies, the policies must be clear, equal opportunities, anti discrimination policies, um, you know, and, and enforcement because if we have a policy that says that in an organisation we must have thirty percent of, uh, you know, women in leadership. And it's not enforced. It's never going to happen. How do we enforce that? Is the question. Flexible work balance. We've indicated it. That has to be something that is in policy. So it makes it easy for women to know that they also have, you know, space uh, to, even though they are going, they started their life, they are giving birth and all that. They also still have their job. And the the last will still be leadership and development. So looking at the outlook and global perspective. Um, there's progress and momentum, definitely, uh, but there's still work to be done. There's still challenges and disparity um, that still exist, and then the intersectional and inclusivity is still something that we need to focus on heavily. So that you know, closes the first part of the discussion, just looking at the elements and what we are we are looking at when we talk about women in, in leadership. And um, I believe that uh, there's a lot that we all have to do, and I'm sure there's a, the, the listeners and, and the ladies on board, and not only ladies, really, because my mentor, for example, is not even a lady. It's a man. Right. And right. the men are also very, 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 very um, welcome into the discussion of this women in leadership thing, because we can't exclude them in the discussion, because we need the support uh, to make sure that that's, that is achieved. And, and the guidance as well. So definitely the, the men are very much welcome into this um, discussion. So if you permit me to go to the uh, second part of the discussion, um, just talking about the business case. So the business right, case, right, 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 right. So the business case um, for the women in leadership agenda is rooted in proven correlation between gender diversity, um, leadership teams and enhanced innovation, better decision making increase market competitiveness and improved overall organizational performance. 
And just to give a view on um, the research that was done, and this which is the numbers I'm going to say now is not really considering uh, men or, or women. They just did a research to have a view of certain dynamics in the in in, in corporate um, institutions. So. 65% of employees would happily refuse to a pay rise. So as long as they can replace their boss, that shows that people want to go up. 75% of people quit their jobs as a direct consequence of their bosses, which makes managerial incompetence, who makes managerial incompetence the number one cause of turnover in the world. Um, Analytic studies indicate that toxic bosses have a, 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 you know, a, a pervasive negative influence on employees, turnover, salary, and productivity. And then 84% of workers report persistent stress and anxiety problems caused by their bosses. We also have fewer than 20% of boards, um, uh, 20, uh, fewer than 20% of boards feel confident of, um, effectively addressing their leadership problems, only 20%. And that means that there's still a question there, why 20%? And up to 70% of executives fail within just 18 months of taking their role. And then for the last one, it just says that even in democratic countries, approval ratings for heads of states uh, typically hovers around 40% of, 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 of the map. So, the, the research um, also delves into giving a view on how women, you know, who sat on boards and looking at the number of represent, representatives and, and how, what was the outcome. So basically the study have found out that unless you have about 30% female representation, there will be no significant benefits of having more senior female leaders equally any uh, an analysis of 90 banks um, during 1999 and 2015 indicated that women participation in boards boosted the firm's performance once a minimum threshold of female board members has been achieved. It also seems that high performing firms are much more likely to perform higher uh, from um, higher female representation as was documented um, by another research done in 2007 and 2014. So the numbers are showing that with women on the board and all the diversity they bring on board, it even goes to show that it's bringing out positive outcomes from you know, the, 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 the business performance. Uh, the other is the, the research also indicated that even when studies show that firms with higher proportion of women in senior position roles perform better, they report that in those same studies, women earn significantly less. So we still have policy issues that have to be solved in there. The effects can be somewhat mitigated when a critical mass of women reach senior leadership roles. So we need more representation because with more representation, our voices will be heard. And uh, this is evidence for um, this is evidence for the weak connection between merit compensation, particularly across genders. And the other bit was the, 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 the research also zoomed down on adding new skills, range of skills. One of the benefits of having more female board members is that they add a new range of skills and diversity um, and background to the board. And the, the research also showed that another benefit, as reported in a French study, for nearly 400 firms between 2001 and 2010 is better monitoring and oversight ability um, in the organizations. And as I've already indicated, improved financial performance metrics. Women leaders don't just improve financial performance metrics, they also de-risk uh, the firm performance and improve CSR. You know, corporate social responsibility is a soft, is a softer part of, of a business as against the hard part where we talk about EBITDA, return on investment and all that. And it is this research realized that um, women in, 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 in the organization and leaderships uh, improved those areas and also ESG, that's environmental, social and governance um, areas. 
uh, with more women on the boards are more likely to disclose their greenhouse emissions as shown in the study of publicly listed Canadian firms between 2008 and 2014. As the economist recently noted, women are generally less corrupt, apparently, and more moral than men. And more power, uh, and since power corrupts and toxic leaders destroy teams, organizations and nations fear traits, um, uh, you know, nations, few traits are critical to leadership potential and integrity. So the, the, the research is given us certain numbers and as we've already <clears throat> noted some of the elements and some of the barriers, we can all, we almost relate. Some areas, of course, may be a bit gray, but we can relate and numbers don't lie. And the research also delves on improvement in innovation. So firms with higher proportion of women on boards tend to invest more in innovation and be more innovative. Example, a recent study for uh, found that a 10% increase of female representation in boards was associated with a 7% increase in innovation patents and citations. A deeper analysis of the underlying mechanism to this associ association revealed that firms with more female board members are more likely to put in place accountability and oversight processes to effectively manage innovation. Likewise, a large study of 18,547 firms in 15 developing countries reported a positive link between women representation in firm um, ownership and management on one hand and the innovation output on the other hand. So lastly, they also made a, you know, reference to increased return on investment. And the return on investment for gender equality has just has not just been eval uh, you know, evaluated top down, they also looked at bottom up. So from the females that are in, in the lower space as well. Um, the Economist and Mackenzie Global Institute estimated that if the gender gaps in participation, hours, work and productivity were all bridged, the world economy would be $28.4 trillion. That is the 26% rich. So the, the numbers are telling us that we have some work to do. And then the last one basically is around the women, uh, you know, qualification beyond the, you know, measurable benefits of women in leadership. Psychological research highlights a female, female advantage in leadership. Example, women are more qualified than men. Apparently, excuse me, outnumbering out, out and outperforming them in colleges. So this is a big reversal from the 1960s and points to the higher qualification and better hard skills women bring to the table. So Benjamin, with this, uh, you know, business case, we, we can tell that the numbers are speaking for themselves, that there's, there's more room for improvement. So before I go to the call, call to action, maybe I will pause to see whether there's any any question, and then we can go, go on to the call to action. Wow. Questions? We don't need questions now because I'm actually asking myself, with all this, with all these statistics, with all these things, what, what are we waiting for? <laughs> the question, the exactly. only question is, what are we waiting for? <laughs> that mindset change. It's, it's a mindset change that you know right. we have to um, develop. So, yes, and, and, and that question is right on point. We need to develop a mindset change. And I know people have been asking me, even, even women themselves have to develop a mindset change and tell right. themselves that they can't be in those leadership, leadership positions. Because if they don't develop that mindset change, no amount of mentoring, coaching would also improve that. And women who are also already in those boardrooms and the C-suites must, you know, focus and be intentional on pulling, you know, others into, uh, you know, the room and bringing them to the table. So the last part of my, my, my discussion or presentation will just focus on the call to action. And the call to action basically for the women in leadership agenda is a powerful reminder of the need for a collective commitment. There's no way one person can do it by themselves. 
a collective commitment to address gender disparity, foster inclusive work workplaces, and actively support women's enhancement into leadership roles to harness the full potential of diverse talents and perspectives. So I just delved on, on, on four key areas. There are many uh, uh, things, but I will just you know delve in four key areas. And I think the concerted effort is very important. Organizations where we put in the right policies, where we put in the right you know, supporting infrastructure, um, the right opportunities for women. Uh, I know organizations who have, you know, intentionally put women into leadership training just to move them to the top. Uh, and, and, and that's very important. Individuals must also do the, their part. The people, the, the ladies themselves who want to get into those leadership, you know, um, leadership roles must also do their part. And society basically so that we can build this together. The other is promote equal representation. And I think it's very important, though at this point, most of the time I see myself, I'm the only lady sitting amongst men. Like I said, it's never been my reality to even notice that until somebody comes to say lady and gentleman, then I'm like, oh, I'm the only one here, <laughs> you know, but we shouldn't be, I shouldn't be the only one amongst men. We should have more women sitting on the table. Um, the, the, close the gender pay gap and i think that's the critical part because i don't see how today there are women who are the breadwinners of of, of their homes um and not only the corporate women really even market women you know market women and and you know people who are in informal sectors are breadwinners so the 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 old view of viewing the fact that you know the man is the breadwinner therefore he should earn more than the woman must be something that we should address uh, going forward and how do we do that uh, we have to take concrete steps to to do that and i think organizations should also focus on conducting pay equity audits just to make sure that we're closing that gap and lastly development of women leadership skills and i think it's very important um speaking engagements how do you get feel confident in who you are programs to enhance your skills you're out of the university what are the programs to enhance your skill how do you empower yourself how do you you know you are out of the university first class student and you're not able to speak in an interview how do we support on that narrative and i think it's very important so these are the four key things that I feel are call to action, and they're actually very packed, and we might not have time to break down, you know, all these things. So that brings me to the end of my presentation, and um, I will take any questions from here on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I, I, I'm not sure we are ready to take questions <laughs> because <laughs> we, we just need to listen to you over and over again. So viewers, I told you we're going to love to listen to our guests over and over again because these four pointers, we need to revisit them one by one. And I know, I mean, today might not be the best time for it, but hey, Winfrey, this is huge. This is huge statistics. This is huge pointers yeah. that have been raised. Yeah. And then... um. Uh, I mean, I was just asking myself, how are we going to do all these things? But you just made mention of that mindset change. The mindset yeah. change. How are we doing this mindset change? How are we coming about it? How are we doing? And are, are, are the women ready for this change themselves? Or is it that kind of, uh, we need a, a serious paradigm shift because we have that kind of mindset already. So changing it, I know it's going to be a lot of, we're going to have a lot of challenges. But as you said, when we have one person in there, it's it's lies on this person to be able to bring the others up. Once we see you up there, it makes the journey easier for us because we've seen our own kind, we've seen our person there. But how do we get it? How do we do it? The one there, how do you how are you able to rally around people? How are you able to pull them over there? Is it because uh, we want to get more women in there, so we are bringing people just because we want to bring people, or is it are we going to have some particular way of doing it. A special example is someone who has finished their final year and they don't have that confidence to even go and interview. So in this case, how do we go about such 
such lines so that we can make sure that we bring in more people up there and then we can be able to rely on the accountability and then the auditing and then making more policies that will create more room for such uh, innovative uh, working environments to be created. Yeah, so I'll take it in, in, in um, two different areas and the first area is from a corporate setup and I think the corporate setup is more formalized right. and from that side definitely we need to make sure that the um, the conversations around women leadership goes all the way to the board where there's implementation of policies there's you know uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call it a focus to improve you know women um, programs to give women opportunities to know who, who they are and to grow their internal skills because sometimes people don't even know what skills they have until they start to nurture them. And it's also important for people to know that in this you know, world of leadership, we learn and learn, relearn. So I, was, I, would get, I would just give myself as an example, okay? I was in IT. I was doing a lot of scripts, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, SQLs. We were doing implementation, uh, queries of database. I had to unlearn that when I went into risk management and learn a new skill. I had to unlearn that. It wasn't easy because I thought, oh, I'm losing all my technical skills. But I had to unlearn it to be able to be valuable in the next phase. Um, I acted as an executive for a whole year. I had to unlearn my risk management technical skills to start thinking strategically, because if I don't do that, how do I understand what the board expects of me as, as a, an executive? Um, what the shareholders are expecting of you? What uh, different you know, uh, stakeholders are expecting of you? So we, we have to put that in, in our minds. From a corporate side, I think the structure is already there. We just have to push some more. I mean, the other part I want to take it from is from the personal side, where people must take their, their growth into their own hands and make sure that you are assert assertive, you are asking yourself the questions. I'm out of school. What do I do? How do I get, you know? I've had total strangers come to me on LinkedIn to say, Winifred, can you mentor me? You know, I'm like, yes. I will do it. I've had total strangers come to me and say, can you coach me? Who do I, can you help me to find a coach? You need to do that for yourself because if you don't do that for yourself, then this whole gender, um, you know, <laughs> and, and equality and women in leadership thing becomes skewed to only one right. side. Yes, how, is it, is it something you want? Is it something you want? How do you get there? You just have to ask. Um, I have realized that I've had immense, immense, immense knowledge growth when I had a mentor. There were things, there's no way I could have gotten that from a book. No way. There were, you know, the dynamics of, 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 of experiences that those mentors have. You can't get it from any book. You know, the things that the coaches tell you, you can never get it from any book. So sure. you have to leverage on people's experiences and their, you know, life and uh, knowledge to be able to also propel yourself to the next level. And I believe once we are doing that from that side and then the corporate side, we will get headwind. And as for the communities where we, we live, I think those discussions are, you know, quite, uh, you know, heavy. And I would say that there are discussions we always have to have and see how we can bridge that because when we start talking about communities, we start thinking about culture. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had, you know, mentorship for children, you know, young ladies who are uh, Muslim kids. And, you know, Muslims after, you know, a certain age, you have to marry, but they're in school, their parents are pushing them to go and things like that. What advice can you give? You can't tell them to ignore their culture and, and move to this. You need to be able to guide them. How do you guide them, you know, and all that. So, it's 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 a it's a multi-faceted and you know uh, um, efforts to make sure that we get to that to that level. Wow, wow! I love the points you raised earlier on. You had to, in a way, unlearn your technical skills and relearn 
the kind of managerial kind of skills, language, and understand that terrain before you go into it. Now, I will ask, doing that, are you not trying to forego what you actually went to school to study? Actually not. Actually not. Actually not. Because um, it, 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 it also boils down to what you want out of um, out of life and where you where you think your career projection should go. Um, we would not have operational technical people in the boardroom always. Um, they will come as you know specialists to explain to people who are looking strategically. Right. Um, you would have people in the boardroom who in their past have been programmers, yes, but today they are entrepreneurs, they are um, executives leading different groups, they are even leading groups that they might not even have gone to university, you know, they might not have earned that uh, university certificates to manage because of the skill they relearn to be able to manage that. Because when you're going up, it's not about your technical skill anymore. It's about your leadership skill and your strategic insights when you're going up the ladder. It's no more about your technical skill, but don't forget that your technical skill will give you more understanding on how to do that. Because today, if I sit in any board that speaks on information security risks, uh, what do you call it, technical risks, I understand it quite well because I've been in there. I have worked with the systems. So when I speak to the gaps from a strategic point of view and how I think that will impact the numbers, it's easy for me because I understand I've done that. But I'm not, I'm no more, you know, working in that, uh, you know, technical space. So it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't take anything off you. It actually enhances um, you uh, and, and brings you to a different level, basically. Well, wow, it brings you to a different yeah. level, basically. Yeah, so my technical people, yeah, you know something, we are here. We are moving to the executive level where we are going to be able to explain our technical terms to our executive team members to make strategic decisions. So, hey, they, exactly. uh, we are not cutting you off. We are not cutting it off. It is in it. <laughs> we need to have it inside it. So don't think that you, you are leaving it behind and that is my feel, that's my no. passion, that is all I want to do. No, 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 no. That, that is it for you there. Straight <laughs> away for you there. <laughs> it is needed. We need all those experiences to make those strategic decisions. So don't think yeah. you are leaving it and then you are going to a, a gray area where you are not going to flourish. Look at her. Exactly. <laughs> and you're going to understand. Right. Okay. So just a quick question. I want, I, let me bring this question here from uh, one of you. It says, uh, so what impact do women leaders have on workplace culture yeah. and dynamics? Hmm. Like <laughs> yeah, so I think the, the impact that um, women bring is um, that diversity, and I think we've spoken it's about yes. it in the presentation, the diversity, because, right. I mean, women see things in a different way, and men see things in a different way. And if you've been uh, around and you've done, you know, so many things, you bring a different perspective to the table. Sure. Um, a case in point can be, let me just just give an example to say, perhaps we are in, uh, you know, a board meeting and we are maybe discussing something to do with a disciplinary, uh, you know, a decision on somebody who's done something wrong. You know, the women perspective can look at it from an apathy point of view. The male might look at it strongly from principle, but remember that when you are dealing with people, you need to look at the empathy side. So this might be, uh, it's just an example, really. It might not be yeah, a practical right. one. So basically what I'm saying is that the impact that we bring is the diversity to the, the, to the culture. And right. once the culture is set, is set and the practices are set, it's the different ways and making the whole conversation richer. That's basically what we also bring to the table. Uh, just like what the men bring to the table, they also look at this from you know, a different perspective from their background and the, you know, uh, looking at this from, you know, uh, what, what, what do you call it? I don't want to use machoism, but <laughs> looking at it from basically a different perspective to make right. the conversation richer. So we can, we can say we have, we have done a 360 check uh, on whatever conversations that we are, we are doing. 
Right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Says, uh, all we need is a mindset change. Thank you so much. And as Sterling Osebos says, great pointers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it coming. Keep, let's cheer <laughs> out. Let's cheer out. Let's, let's keep bringing it. Well, well, well. I'm, I, I just can't have enough of this because all these pointers that you've raised are practical, straight to the point. And then the yeah. classical example you just gave. Just, just, just add the icing on the cake for the whole topic that we're going to be, and uh, that's this is so powerful and this is so straightforward to the point. I, I'm still looking at those percentages that you give, seventy five percent, seventy percent, twenty percent. I'm still going to go back to it and then I'm going to really have a look at it because yes, I, 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 I really love it. I love those those percentages that you give, and I'm sure we're going to pick it up from you. So it's yeah, from technical skills to leadership skills to strategy skills. Don't let them. Go. Go. don't let them slip through your fingers you need to relearn relearn and move to the top and based on your career projections that you have right so this is what we always do at the end of every episode you know we come in with hashtags so i'm sure you viewers have your hashtags ready if you have any of your hashtags for today's episode you know what you do already just put it in there let's compare our notes and see if we had the same <laughs> hashtag <laughs> or we want to relearn uh something we will learn a hashtag and learn your hashtag <laughs> and we will use it <laughs> we use it in this working space right so uh before um prefred gives us um uh, final words if I'm not getting any other question from you or the audience. I'll let Winifred go with that. But before we do that, we want to take a final commercial break. And right after that, if you don't have any question, Winifred will do us the honors of wrapping it up for us for today's episode. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation, and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs, and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers for booking and interviews. Contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.absesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at Absesnet Global. African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Influencing the next generation of Africans, and for that matter, any young person anywhere. And for today's episode, any young lady, any young woman anywhere, we want to influence our next generation by making sure we are on learning and relearning the new skills that is going to take us to the next level where we want to have ourselves. And it has been a wonderful time having here with Fred De La Seto Mensa, a mother of five, combining practice, <laughs> mentoring, coaching. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I mean, so how you cope with this five back then when we are having only three months and not six months. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yes, we need to yes, give you an yes, award. Yes. We need to give you an award. <laughs> we need to give an award for that because this, this, this is something that we, yeah. we want to appreciate you for all that you've gone through and where you are now and where you are still going and then lifting the flag up for us to follow up. So we want to say big congratulations to you for all that you've done. And then we appreciate <laughs> We appreciate it. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not. it's not easy. It's not easy. And then the key word you used there was having a supportive husband who just makes sure everything went in as it says. Right. So, ha, ha, ha. what were you able to glean from all that was given to us? We'll still wait for it and we'll just take our final words from Winifred on this topic for today. So, our final words before we go off the show today all right so thank you so much benjamin for having me and i've actually really enjoyed the session and i just want to also say thank you to the viewers and those who are online and i appreciate you and i want to say that let's continue to push um women in leadership and not only women in leadership really today the subject is on women in leadership but also how we can have that support system from the the men 
and, and, and even to also push and support the men in leadership, because together we can collectively make the world a better place. And that's what I believe. And this is why I have so much passion in talking about leadership, because it starts from us as individuals to understand who we are as people, what we have, our worth, what value we want to give, and what impacts we want to make. And going back to Oprah Winfrey, it's about impact, it's about um, courage, and it's about influence. So I wish you all the best in your different endeavors, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having you too. So yes, <laughs> it's a wonderful time. So how how do people get to you if people want to follow you on your social media handles? Uh, being if people want to get to you to serve yeah, as their sure. mentors or be a yeah, coach, I'm, I'm, how would you put them? I'm very very much um, active on LinkedIn. I'm also on um, on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, but I'm much much active on LinkedIn. So once you search my name, you'll find me. Uh, and if you send me a request, I would accept. Right. If you send me a request, I will accept. So do that. And let's see from there. Let her accept and then we'll pick it from there. All right. Let's get ready for a hashtag for today. And as you know, we give hashtag for the day. And that carries us throughout the whole week. And then it brings to us remembrance of all that we've been able to gather during this episode. So a hashtag for today. <laughs> That's a hashtag for today. Flip it. <laughs> our hashtag for today it's flip it we are flipping it because we need to unlearn certain things and relearn certain things and move into that avenue and that area where we want to have or i want to see ourselves we can still be at that same place and be complaining he said when you've been given a compost turn it into a fertilizer and use it <laughs> <laughs> and use it and use it so yes on that note we want to say a very big thank you to Winifred the last Seth Smith for gracing our platform on this day for us and sharing with us this wisdom nuggets and wonderful pointers for leaders or women in leadership and we want to say thank you to our viewers for also making time to be on a call with us and sharing the comments with us, asking questions and giving more cheers and being more supportive. I mean, messages. We are so great for that you are here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank we you. want to say thank, thank, you, thank so you, much. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, to so meet same time next week on the same platform at the same time. All I want to say is I have a wonderful week. And as you know, dreams are in levels. Make sure you get to the top level of your dream. To so meet same time next week. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswaza. See you and make sure you flip it. <laughs>